Glory to the Lamb. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Praise God. <laughs> God is good all the time. <laughs> well, what a time and season we're in right now. Amen. What an awakening that's going on globally. In such a time as right now, you know, uh, turn to uh, uh, the book of Joel. Joel. We're going to go to Joel's place. Joel chapter 2. Glory. Joel 2 is just for you. This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice because we have a choice. We have the power to choose. Remember, this is not a Bible study. This is a training session because we are part of the military. Amen. Jesus is the chief and commander. Hallelujah. Verse 28, what does it say? Let's speak it. It shall come to pass afterward. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. I'm glad I still see visions. <laughs> and also on my men servants and on my maid servants, I will pour out my spirit in those days. What was God talking about? He says, listen, I'm going to pour out my spirit. In other words, what he's going to do in mankind, anyone who's willing to follow, anyone who's willing to receive, anyone who's willing to execute what he asks them to do, he says, I'm going to pour out my spirit so that we can get a projected reality. Projected reality. In Proverbs chapter 4. See, so many people's projection is according to self, which brings carnal interpretation. And carnal interpretation brings damage, brings bondage. That's why the world doesn't understand you. That's why you don't understand yourself sometimes. <laughs> Glory. Proverbs 4. Is everybody there? <clears throat> Projected reality. That's why we're seeing so much stuff going on. Even though some of the people in the body of Christ, they're still projecting false reality. Amen. In Proverbs 4, let's uh, speak it from verse 1. Hear, my children, the instruction of a father and give attention to know what? Understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law or my word. When I was my mother's, with my, my father's son, tender and the only one in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. Keep my commandments and live. Get what? Wisdom and get what? Understanding. See, wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. Amen? But we want it from above, not from earthly. He says, do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her. She will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the what? Principal thing. That's one of the things we should be asking for every single day. Lord, give me the wisdom. Give me understanding. Give me revelations that I may see things through. Do not forsake her. She will preserve you. Love her and she will what? Keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and in all you're getting, get what? Understanding. Exalt her, and she will promote you. She will bring you honor. When you embrace her, everyone say embrace. Embrace, embrace her. She will place on your head 
an ornament of grace, a crown of glory she will deliver to you. Hear, my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in the right paths. When you walk, your steps will not be hindered, and when you run, you will not stumble. Take firm hold of instruction, and do not let go. Keep her, for she is your life. Again, wisdom tells us what to do. Understanding tells us how to do it. Again, you got to remember about grace. There is a misinterpretation of grace. Grace is not God's unmerited favor. You earn God's favor. Grace is God's unmerited love. Grace is the plan of God to escape. That's why he came with a plan. It's called grace. It never said anything it was grace was God's unmerited favor. Jesus came in the fullness of grace and what? Truth. And what's grace and truth? It's a plan. Plan to what? Escape the deception of the enemy and escape God's wrath. Because if you don't escape the deception of the enemy, you're in God's wrath. Amen? So grace is a plan of escape. It's a plan of God. So that's why you and I are saved by what? Grace. That's his plan. If you're not cooperating with his plan, then you're not saved by grace. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. So in this, we've got to receive his wisdom. We've got to receive his understanding. Turn to James 3. James 3. Oh, happy days. <clears throat> James 3, verse 12. Get wisdom, get understanding. It's all delivered by the anointing. It's one of the parts of the seven attributes, which we'll talk about in a minute. In verse 12, let's speak it. Or, uh, James 3, verse, verse 13, I'm sorry. Is everybody there? Who is wise and understanding among you? Let him show by what? Good conduct. What's good conduct? Submissive. In other words, we're expressing Christ's character, no longer our old character. Let him show by good conduct that his works are done in the what? Meekness of wisdom. But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is what? Earthly, sensual, and what? Demonic. So he's talking about something very powerful. He said, listen, there's two types of wisdom. And so many people don't realize that they've stepped out of the wisdom from the anointing, Christ, and stepped into the worldly wisdom. And it brings bondage. Is everybody okay? It says this wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. For where envy and self-seeking exist, confusion and every evil thing are what? There. So these are the fruits of the differences of two wisdoms. One's from above, one's from beneath. But the wisdom that is from above is first what? Is what? Pure. It's peaceable. It's gentle. It's willing to submit and yield. It's full of mercy. And it has good fruits. Without partiality and without hypocrisy. And the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace by those who what? Make peace. So we see there's a meekness of wisdom, which is pure and peaceable, it's gentle. It's willing to submit and surrender and yield. It's full of mercy with good fruits of righteousness. This is the wisdom from above. This is not of this world, this wisdom. This, the wisdom of the world is envy, bitterness, self-seeking. It brings confusion and opens doors to every evil agenda of corruption and destruction. 
Earthly demonic wisdom projects a self-seeking attitude. I'm going to say it again. Earthly demonic wisdom projects a self-seeking attitude in a state of deception and leads to delusion. We're seeing that happen all over the world right now. Not only is there an awakening, but there also is a falling away. People are taken into deception. Heavenly wisdom projects reality that sees through the temporary. Amen? And Isaiah 11. <clears throat> Isaiah 11. You know, what, something I shared many times, the greatest joy of the father, of daddy, is that his children see what he sees. That's the greatest joy he has for us. For him, the greatest thing for me and you is to get to a place where we see what he sees. Because when we get to that level where he, we call it the master's level, that we see what he sees, he can trust us. Isaiah 11, in verse 1. There shall come forth a rod from the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Now, we know he's talking about Jesus, right? How many of y'all know we're joint heirs of Christ? So we get the same thing. Amen. He says, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. It's called the anointing. The spirit of what? Wisdom and what? Understanding. Do you see what he expresses after the spirit of the Lord comes upon him? The wisdom and what? Understanding. Then he talks about the spirit of counsel. Why? Because without the spirit of wisdom and understanding, how could the, you're not going to, you're not going to advance to the spirit of counsel. The spirit of counsel and might. The spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. It says his delight is in the fear of the Lord and he shall not judge by what he what? His eyes, what he sees. The sight of his eyes, nor decide by the hearing of his ears, because he knows he's going to see all kinds of things. In other words, this wisdom and understanding, which is not earthly, which judges wisdom and understanding, earthly wisdom and understanding, judges by what they see and what they hear. That's why people hear all kinds of voices. They see all kinds of, and they're, and they're, they're judging by those things. But the wisdom that's from above does not judge according to that way. It's an inner, not an outer. It's a quickening of the spirit. It's a knowing because you're, falling, you're in line with the will of God, with the presence of God, and with the word of God. It's totally different. See, where the anointing is, it's different. That's why we fight to worship. We must fight to get into God's presence, to connect. Without God's presence, you and I are nothing. That's why when we were B.C., we used drugs in our, what we were looking for, God's presence. We did that. We were looking for a fulfillment, and a fulfillment is only in God's presence. That's it. So our delight is in the fear of the Lord, and we will not judge by what we see nor what we hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall slay the wicked. Righteousness shall be the belt of his loins, and faithfulness the belt of his ways. Again, we are joint heirs with Christ in the same spirit of the anointing with seven attributes to project reality is on us too. But you must receive, believe, and execute. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians chapter 2. <clears throat> In 
in verse 6. Training for reigning. What does it say? However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature, yet not the wisdom of this age, nor of the rulers of this age who are coming to what? Nothing. So he's talking about the wisdom of this age is coming to nothing. But we speak the wisdom of God in a what? Mystery. How many of you know praying in tongues is a mystery? The hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages of, for our glory. This wisdom was preordained for our glory. That he may get the glory. Which none of the rulers of this age knew. For if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. <laughs> Boy, did they blow that. <laughs> but as it is written, I has not seen nor ear heard nor entered into the heart of a man. The things which God has prepared for those who love him. But God has revealed them to us through his spirit or through the what? Anointing. I'm going to talk about the anointing until I go home. Yes, the deep things of God. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? Even so, no one knows the things of God except the what? Spirit of God. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been what? Freely give, given to us by him. In other words, these are benefits. How many of you know healing is a benefit? Prosperity is a benefit. Amen. Everything's going to work to the good is a benefit. Even when you make a mistake, even when we're boneheads and we repent quickly. <laughs> verse 13 these things we also speak not in words which man's wisdom teaches but which the Holy Spirit teaches comparing spiritual things with spiritual but the natural man the carnal man the old man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God for they are foolishness to him nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned but he who is spiritual judges all things Yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. Wow. Projection of wisdom without understanding brings deception. Only the Spirit of the Lord, the anointing, the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty, which uses his wisdom and understanding, is to guide us in every area and bring sight so we can see things through and opens our ears to hear the things, but it's a within the inner area of us. In other words, we don't go by what everybody says. There's a lot of gossip out there. The true projection of reality is by the interpretation of the spirit. Allowing perception. What is perception? What's per perception is which identifies. Perception identifies. And discernment is the ability to judge. It's released to each and every one of God's children that are filled, followers, and faithful. I'm going to say that again. Projected or projection of the pr true projection of reality by the interpretation of the Spirit, uh, he uh, is allowing perception which identifies and discernment which is the ability to judge. It is released to those who are filled, followers, and faithful for the call of Christ. In other words, they are sold out. Perception is which identifies. Discernment is the ability to judge. You know, I many, hear many people, well, you're not supposed to judge. Oh, I'm supposed to judge. I judge fruits. I'm a fruit inspector. Man, you're judging me. Praise God. 
and repent it and get rid of their garbage. <laughs> Let's see the fruit of righteousness, not corruption. 1 John chapter 4. <clears throat> We are in a constant fight against deception. Remember, deception is Satan's greatest weapon and his power is fear. First John chapter four. It's right after first John chapter three. What wisdom, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Boy, did I get great understanding on that one. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's called carnal interpretation. <laughs> First John chapter 4, verse 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit. Thank you, Jesus. I mean, you don't believe me? You know, there's one thing the Lord said to me. Show me. Show me. When he said to me, Guy, do you want to get off on drugs and alcohol? Do you want a new, new life? At the moment, I was like, man. Let's see, I tried to get off drugs and alcohol, but I never really wanted a new life. I just wanted to get off the dope, but still hang around with the same people, do the same thing, and try to stop doing dope. No way. You can't do it. And I knew what he meant when he said that. He said, in other words, when he said, if I want a new life, you've got to give up everything. Your family, your children, everything has got to be mine. And then when I restore it, it'll be under my control and not yours. Amen? So I said, all right, I want a new life. And the, I'm, I'm expecting this famous answer. All right, go here, do this. Do no, what does he say? Show me. Show you. So I did everything in my own understanding to try to show him. I checked into a detox right away. <laughs> that was the first thing. I got to get cleaned up. And I turned everything that they had there around. They tried to put me in a 12-step. I took that prayer all at once. I just began to pray the prayer. I was looking for one step. Then he came to visit after two months of showing him whatever I could do. See, there's two things he always looks for, brokenness. He's always looking for brokenness and humbleness. He brings us to a place to break us. It's the same thing as the alabaster box. It has to be broke. See, we get to a place where we begin to think we know it now. <laughs> and then the door slams right in our face. Brokenness is the place he looks for. See, we've got to enter a place of brokenness, and that's a reality where I am nothing without you. And you are my fulfillment. Not my spouse, not my children, not any kind of money, not any kind of possession, not my home, not anything. You're my fulfillment. And those things do not come to pass unless they're confessed. That's what makes connection. Amen? So we got to test the spirits. Test every spirit, but test the spirit whether they are of God. Because many false prophets, doctrines of demons, have gone out into the world. By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of the Antichrist, which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. Listen, I, I, this may, I, and this is not against doctrine. A, a person may confess Jesus came in the flesh and still be in error. Does anybody understand that? 
There's a lot of believers that still confess Jesus came in the flesh, but they're, they're in outer courts. Some of them are not even in there. They're out in the outer darkness now. Because at one time, they began to walk with God and backslid all the way out. It says, verse 4, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world, therefore they speak as of the world, and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. By this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of what? Error or a spirit of deception. So we see there's a projected truth or a projected deception. A person may confess Jesus Christ came in the flesh and still be an heir. Because the life that that person is living is not producing the fruits. Projection of truth or projection of deception. Usually this has become the individual has fallen to a place where they're no longer filled, following, or faithful. Those three things are vital. Being filled, follow, and faithful. Second Peter chapter 2. Believe me, I've seen this happen many times. You believe Jesus Christ came in the flesh? Yes! You want to join? No. I thought you just said Jesus came in the flesh. Yeah. Well, he drank too. All these people are goofy. <laughs> oh, happy days. Second Peter chapter 2, verse 18. So that's why you need to have wisdom, understanding, discernment. You must get into a place where you're able to perceive with perception. Verse 18, is everybody there? Let's speak it. For when they speak great swelling words of what? Emptiness. They allure through the lust of the flesh, through lewdness, the ones who have actually escaped from those who live in error. So that one time they were walking right. While they promised them liberty, freedom, they themselves are slaves of corruption. For whom by a person is overcome by him, also he is brought into bondage. It's backslidden. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they again entangle in them and overcome, the latter end is worse for them than the beginning. For it would have been better for them not to have known the way of righteousness than having known it, to turn from the holy commandment delivered to them. But it has happened to them, according to true proverb, a dog returns to his own vomit, and a soul having washed to her wallowing in mire. Now remember, dog in the Bible means demonized individual. They project a false freedom polluted by the demonic influence of worldly wisdom. Through media, music, money, lust, fame, all of this other stuff that the world has to offer. And they draw away the righteous, many of the righteous, into unrighteousness. So they return back to the lust of the carnality, slipping deeper into delusion and darkness. They slip further and further into delusion and darkness. Psalm 38. Oh, happy days. Psalm 38. In <clears throat> verse 9. Is everybody there? Let's speak it. 
Lord, my desire is before you, and my sign is not hidden from you. My heart pants, my strength fail, fa fails me. And as far as light of my eyes, it has also gone from me. My loved ones and my friends stand al aloft from my plague. How many of y'all know that the world, the world, now check this out. Holy Spirit gave me this today. When he began to talk about this plague in, this, in the psalm, he said the world, the anointing to the world is a plague. The anointing to an unsaved person is a plague to them. They can't handle it. It's a plague. Until they come into the kingdom, then it's no longer a plague. But the anointing is a plague to them. He said, my relatives stand afar and off. You know, after you got saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, how many times is your family still waiting for you to go back? You know? Oh, it's just temporary, one of those religious things. <laughs> See, the anointing that it began to increase in your life became a plague to them. They didn't want to stay near. They couldn't believe they wanted to stay away from it. Those also who seek my life lay snares for me. Those who seek my hurt speak of destruction and plan what? Deception all day long. But I, like a deaf man, do not hear them. Hello. He wasn't going to listen to that voice. And I am like a mute who does not open his mouth. He wasn't going to get influenced by that voice to speak anything. Thus, I am like a man who does not hear and whose mouth is no response. For in you, O Lord, I hope. You will hear, O Lord my God. For I said, hear me, lest they rejoice over me. Lest when my foot slips, they exalt themselves against me. For I am all ready to fall, and my sorrow is continually before me. For I will declare my iniquity, and I will be in anguish over my sin. But my enemies are vigorous, and they are strong. And those who hate me wrongfully have multiplied. Those also who render evil for good. They are my adversaries because I follow what is good. Do not forsake me, O Lord, O my God. Be not far from me. Make haste to help me, O Lord, my salvation. Again, the anointing is a plague to darkness. Amen? He did not respond to the voices, nor did he confess his emotional feelings to defend himself. He broke through the projected deception into projected reality by decreeing and calling on the father of reality. Again, we are on a constant fight against deception. That is his greatest weapon. It's constant, no matter what. If he can deceive you to speak something, then you reap it. Because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. Amen? Your words don't fall to the ground. And nobody comes and sweeps them up. They go right back into you. Second Thessalonians 2. <clears throat> Second Thessalonians chapter 2. In verse 5. Projected reality. And again, many people are living in a reality where they think this is it. Did you ever believe something that you would have died for and found out you were lied to? I bet my life on it. Oh, snap. <laughs> what a mistake that was. <laughs> a lot of people bet their lives on a lot of stuff. I bet my life on it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thank God God was faithful and merciful. And we'd all been dead. <laughs> this place would have been empty. <laughs> Verse 5. Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things, and now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work, 
Only he who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. And who's the he? Us. Us. We are we're the restrainers. Amen. He's talking about the body of Christ. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders. And with all right, unrighteous, what? Deception, which is unrighteous projection. Among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. For this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie, that they all may be condemned who do not believe the truth but had the pleasure in unrighteousness. Now that's pretty wild because we're seeing a lot of strange things begin to manifest. I've seen a lot of people go from deception to delusion. Amen? And again, we, we're, he's talking about an unrighteous projection of deception. He, what's he tr the enemy trying to do? Dismantle the restrainers. Remember, we are the restrainer, restrainers of evil until we are raptured out of here then all hell is going to break out. This is it, again. We are in the last days, the last time for harvest. We are in a time of seven years of plenty until seven years of famine. <clears throat> again, this unrighteous projection of deception is to dismantle the restrainers that hold Satan's military back from full control. And those reject the rescue are prideful and self-seeking, unable to reach a place of humility because of demonic wisdom projection with no true perception or discernment. I guess you want me to repeat that, huh? <laughs> Those that reject the rescue are prideful and self-seeking. They're unable to reach the place of humility. And it's because of the demonic wisdom projected with no true perception or discernment. There is no true deception, perception or discernment. So it makes it difficult for them to judge. In James chapter 1, in verse 2. James 1, verse 2. Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Projected reality. You know, what reality are we living in? <clears throat> James chapter 1, verse 2. Let's speak it. My brethren, count it all joy when, everyone say when. Amen. When you fall into various trials, not if, hello. Why do we fall into various trials? To expose our impurities and expose our enemy. Amen. Knowing that the testing of your faith produces what? Patience or endurance. I hear people always saying, don't pray for patience. It's going to happen anyways. If you say, Lord, don't give me patience, I mean, what the heck? Patience is endurance. Amen? Well, you're becoming a patient. Hello? But let patience have its what? Perfect work that you may be perfect and complete and lacking nothing. If any of you lacks what? Wisdom. Let him ask of God who gives to all liberally and without reproach, and it will be given to him. In fact, we need to ask for wisdom in everything we do. Let him ask in faith with no doubting, for he who doubts is like a wave of the sea driven and tossed by the wind. For let not that man suppose that he will receive anything from the Lord. He is double-minded, unstable in all his ways, double-minded and unstable. 
double-minded and unstable. Wow. Mm. Without divine wisdom and understanding, perception and discernment is flawed and corrupted. Amen. There's confirmation. <laughs> it brings un it brings an individual in a place of they are unstable. They can't hold. They drift. And they drift towards a shoot towards the human character again instead of the new character. In first John chapter two, and then one more scripture. First John chapter two. Another one's just for you. In verse 18. Little children. That means humble servants. <laughs> and don't go to the Lord again. Lord, here I am, your humble servant. Puke. <laughs> Never approach the Lord and confess that you are a humble servant. Because you just said you're prideful. Does everybody understand that? Lord, here I come, your humble servant. Slap! <laughs> Repent. <laughs> oh, happy days. In verse 18, little children. What does he say? Little children. Come to me as little children. It is the last hour, and as you have heard, that the Antichrist is coming. Even now, many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. We're seeing it all over. There's a much Antichrist everywhere. They went out from us, but they were not of us, for if they had been of us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were of us. But you have a what? An anointing from the Holy One, and you what? You know all things. Whoa. I have not written you because you don't know what the truth is, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar but he who denies that Jesus is the anointed one and is anointing? He is an antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. He who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore, let that abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If what you have heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us, eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to what? Deceive you. But the anointing which you have received from him abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things, and is true, and is not a lie, and just as it is taught you, you will abide in him. Listen, we don't want to be taught by a man. We want to be taught by the anointing. Amen? It says that we will know all things by the eternal presence, power, and truth of God Almighty called the anointing and the seven attributes that bring true projected reality. And we're going to close at Proverbs 2. <clears throat> Training for reigning. Strategies. Get ready. I mean, oh, God always tests us after we learn something. <laughs> Hallelujah. He wants to make sure we got it. <laughs> Verse 1, my son, if you receive my words and treasure my commands within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply your heart to understanding, if you cry out for discernment, and lift up your voice for understanding. If you seek her as silver and search for her as for hidden treasures, then you will understand the fear of the Lord, which is reverence, honor, and respect. That's where David always says, I set the Lord before me. And you will find the knowledge of God. Those are mysteries. 
For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the what? Upright. He is a shield to those who walk uprightly. He guards the paths of justice and preserves the way of his saints. Then you will understand righteousness and justice, equity in every good path. This is a place of positioned and projected reality so that we are seeing the truth in every area. There's nothing in our way. Nothing. Seen in the world, but through it. Amen? Through it. So that the reality that you and I live, so we are not caught up in the temporary reality, in the false reality, or flawed reality. Yes, we have work to do here, but our purpose is to bring people out of this reality into the eternal reality. Amen? Out of the temporary into the eternal but how can you do that if we're not walking in true reality ourselves? We all need the wisdom and understanding from above and everything that we do. So we can reject any kind of voice, any kind of influence, anything. We do not go by what we hear from words. Amen? We discern by the Spirit. The Spirit will always bring us interpretation of what is true and what is not untrue. That's what the anointing is for. Well, without worship and connection, you can't have it. It's impossible. That's where people fall into religiosity instead of relationship. Amen? Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. We ask that you protect the seed that's been in a consuming fire and snare enemies, visiting your people in dreams and visions and revelations, increasing the anointing and thirst and hunger. Lord, remove every lukewarmness from us and keep us hot, that we may see things through, hear things through, and walk things through in the true reality that's projected by you and not by carnality. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.